Hello everyone, welcome to the online open day at Han University of Applied Sciences. We are really happy to have you here. My name is Olga, I'm a second year communication student here at Han, and today I'm going to be hosting this live talk show. But I'm not alone here, I have two guests who are also students at Han, well one an alumni, but nevertheless. And yeah, would you guys want to introduce yourselves? So, hi. I'm uh, Dragos. Um, I studied here up until three years ago, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be back on campus uh, after quite a while. So nice, nice to meet you, Olga. <laughs> yeah. So uh, hi everyone. I'm Rosa. I'm German Laotian, and I'll be starting my <laughs> second year in international business in February. Cool. Nice. So today are we going to be discussing the reasons to study at Han, since we all have our own experience. And we will give you 10 reasons to come to us. Well, I can start with uh, probably my most important one, the practice-based learning. Um, Han is the University of Applied Sciences, so that means that there is more practicalities here, more creative tasks, more things that you need to actually do. So, for example, I remember in communication studies we shoot a lot of videos, we uh, edited a lot of pictures and stuff like that. So I would say that that was one of the reasons why I came to study here, because I don't like being <laughs> drowned in books and everything. So yeah, that was important to me. Um, what about you guys? So uh, for me, I, I studied engineering and um, basically the important part of engineering is not necessarily to understand everything from the books but really go hands-on and for this we had the labs where the designs that we would make on the computer would actually take shape and we would go and uh, weld something or or start uh, uh, printing building something and that also brings you together i guess with the community of students but it gives uh, a, a better kind of grasp of, of the subjects that you study plus um i think one of the things that uh, is different from other universities that professors themselves they have industry knowledge so um, as much as it, it's good to have someone who's been in academia their entire career there's certain flavors certain subtleties that come from working in in the industry um, definitely. yeah yeah and for me uh, definitely the international community because uh, I'm doing international business and as the name, you have to learn to work with people from different cultures. And so far I've met people from almost every continent, whether it's uh, the United States, England, Japan, Korea, uh, Brazil, what else? We have Moroccans here and it's, it's really eye-opening to see how these different cultures tackle the problem, how they dissect the problem and uh, work together with them was amazing yeah i really agree with the international part because um when i came here i was kind of nervous about the intercultural differences but then i realized that everyone is in the same position yeah. everyone is being a bit worried about that so it went smoothly because when you talk to someone you really kind of understand already their style of talking and communicating and you can adapt to it and um, yeah you will not have any problems so yeah international community for sure uh, what about the student life how is it <laughs> yeah the student life i, I think um, um i was of course when i when i come back to arnhem i i, I think of, uh, always the, the memories I, i've built and i think the first year is a special one because everything is so new so mm -hmm. since you're not acquainted to the city it's important to have a community and for me, this was in, in one of the dorms I got assigned to. We were, I think, with over 60 people in that dorm, uh, again, from, from different parts of the world. And that experience of, of meeting, getting to know everybody and seeing that you're all in the same situation, trying to figure out this new uh, city in, in, in Western Europe uh, is something that brings you together and also gets you to solve the, 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 the kind of landing in a new culture uh, much easier. Yeah, and I joined, uh, we, we could say, the peak of uh, the pandemic. So everything was still online. I didn't know. Well, uh, hopefully <laughs> the peak of the pandemic. Everything was still online. Uh, and then the school, they, uh, how do I say, they had this platform where 
we would all be individual characters mm -hmm. and then there would be a computer screen and then we'd have our webcam on it. So we would still walk around and see each other walk around and then there would be different activities on these, whether it's uh, to play a drinking game or to play ball. Wow. And it, it, it's the first time I've seen anything like that. And they're really uh, innovative in when I was here. That's very helpful for those people who joined during coronavirus pandemic, I think, because I believe they felt really isolated at first because yeah. you can't really meet any people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, this really helps, I believe. Um, OK, so um, I studied in both campuses of Arnhem. It just happened <laughs> this way. First, I was studying in Nijmegen. I was doing life science for half a year there. And then I transferred to communication. And um, yeah, communication is in Arnhem, where we are actually right now. Um, and I can say that both campuses are really great. They are very modern and uh, there are like a couple of separate buildings and they're kind of connected together with a little square or a bar <laughs> in our situation. In Arnhem there is a student bar, uh, which is like right in the heart of the campus. And uh, yeah, that's the place where all the students go on uh, Thursday night and Friday night. Thursday night is a student night. And um, yeah, that's a very popular place to be. So yeah, both campuses are nice, but I would say that Arnhem's campus feels more cozy, I'd say. They're like, people just know each other. So when you meet in like hallways or in between uh, classes, you always greet each other. And yeah, it's just super nice. In Nijmegen, it's more spread out, but yeah, it's still uh, a great place to hang out with people. I know from experience. Um, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask you guys, how was the teaching style at Han for you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, very different. Of course, you come from high school, so th there's going to be a step. There's going to be uh, a change. But for me, what was nice is that you could really approach uh, the teachers, the professors. So uh, once you get to meet them, you uh, can walk up to them on the hallway. Uh, they don't necessarily uh, have a sort of hierarchy above students, but they see themselves as member of this this mm -hmm. uh, group. Uh, so in that way, having them so accessible gives you a sort of confidence in your projects and also in your study that you can get help. And it is, uh, especially if you're you're new, it is this this boost that you want to to have uh, at your fingertips. Maybe nowadays with a, with an email or with a conversation that you can schedule in their agenda. Um, but yeah, it's really important. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, when people mention university, usually you have this fixed image in your mind of one professor standing in the middle and then a bunch of you know two hundred students just yeah. surrounding them. And being here, all the classes are very. Uh, compact and therefore all the teachers, all the professors are able to focus on each one of us individually and to be able to actually learn our name, know our task, our strengths and weaknesses. It's it's very family-like feeling. True. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can really agree with that because coming from Russia myself, um, I know that for people from like countries in the Eastern Europe, um, this style of teaching would be very open and very friendly and a bit weird at first because we're used to teachers being a bit more distanced and like very formal but here it's not the case and I find it really nice because um, yeah as um, my guests already mentioned you can always ask for help you can always talk to them and if you kind of show them that you're really interest in the subject, interested in the subject, they will probably even share some of their experience from their life and their career, which is really awesome. So yeah, it's super nice. Um, one of the other reasons that uh, I think is very important, especially for newcoming students, is that you can get a lot of student support here. There are so many teams, <laughs> Han Housing, Han uh, uh, like the International Office, and they will help you with all the problems that might arise. And um, yeah, you will like receive the answer very shortly. That helped me a lot when I just came to the country and I needed to open this bank account and all that formalities. 
that was very handy that I could ask for help straight away. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask, what projects did you guys have in your courses? And if you can maybe highlight one or two. Um, so I'll, I'll go first again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was something that uh, still today is very vivid in my mind. Actually, uh, right outside, I saw one of the cars that we uh, we built. It was the the Formula Student uh, project. So it's it's a competition between universities. Uh, it's not only in Europe. It's 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 worldwide. Where each university every year gets to build one. Uh, race car so there's uh, a, a team of maybe 50 students getting together and we have a schedule and we need to have it ready by uh, a point before the summer and then you get to race the other universities in uh, uh, circuits around Europe and it's it's a way of getting everybody together and putting the knowledge that you learn in something outside of the things you do for your credits, for your grades and so on, but really for something that gets you pumped. So yeah. and it, I, I do remember, of course, it, it can be also stressful since you have certain tasks, but it's uh, it's something you look back to with, uh, yeah, with, with a sort of appreciation that maybe when you're deep down in it, you don't you don't really feel so. Yeah, and then I'm going to mention one that I'm currently doing. It's called Project the Operations. And this activity, this week actually, we were all playing with Legos. So basically we had a, a team of maybe six people, would be two customers, two admin, one uh, distributor, and then manufacturers would be the ones building the Legos. And then we would we played maybe four rounds, and each round there were different uh, goals for us. And then uh, one of the rounds, our professor told us, okay, you have to get rid of two people. <laughs> so <laughs> we all ha were discussing like, hmm, so who's the most useless one here? Because even though it is very mean and uh, very strict, you could say, it's something that happens in real life. And sure. we, we were taught to how to make the business more effective and more efficient. And it is something very crucial these days. True, you have to be objective when mm -hmm. it comes to that, yeah. Okay, and um, yeah, I don't know about you, Dragush, since you started a, um, studied a bit of a different thing, but for us with Rosa, we have this subject called PPD, Personal and Professional Development. And um, yeah, this is, I think, one of the most um, unusual things at Han, uh, it's that uh, it's really focusing on your personal development as well as professional. Um, on this subject, you would be writing reflections about your strengths, weaknesses. You will be brainstorming ideas on how to grow as a person and as a professional. And it's really great, honestly. It gives so many insights and what to really do with your life <laughs> to become like the best version of yourself. So yeah, I'd say it's also one of the reasons why I would really recommend to study here. Yeah, because sometimes when you're learning all of these uh, stuff from the books and the, from online, you forget how you're growing as a person. And then to have this subject, you're really uh, able to pinpoint what you're currently struggling or what you're currently uh, uh, being better at. And then it enables us to tackle these prob problems and make use of these. Uh, in our everyday lives and it's really eye-opening definitely yeah so you guys both lived in Arnhem right when you were studying how was the city for you it was cool I think um, there's there's a period when when you discover yourself as well as the city so there's a period when you start looking for the places, you start uh, smelling, uh, touching, uh, all kinds of, of, of new experiences, and you find the, the, the group that matches maybe, I don't know, your, your music uh, uh, style, or uh, if you're into sports, you're gonna find the right gym or the right boot camp for your activities. And it does have to offer a sort of quietness, a sort of silence that you need for studying as well. I feel like bigger cities, maybe Amsterdam, Rotterdam, mm -hmm. are so full of chaos that oh, yeah. uh, they would allow you less time for your study, which is part of the reason why uh, you're you're here in, in this society. And Arnhem does offer that kind of uh, 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 yeah 
uh, time for, for contemplation and for uh, uh, spending yeah. time also studying. True. Yeah. A couple of months ago, we drove up to uh, Den Haag, mm -hmm. the, the Hague, and then I for, forget how tall these buildings can get, you know? <laughs> they just go higher and higher, sure. and to be surrounded by all these concrete blocks, it's it's a bit suffocating for me. Mm -hmm. And then in Arnhem, you, you walk outside, you see the park, you see uh, lakes and everything. And it's a, a much nicer feeling for me personally. Mm -hmm. But I don't know uh, how other people feel about uh, maybe you like concrete buildings. And yeah, yeah it Definitely. all depends on you, really. Yeah. And uh, I lived in both Nijmegen and in Arnhem right now. Um, and as for Nijmegen, I can say that the biggest difference uh, between those two cities is that Nijmegen is more like spread out. So, for instance, your university will be here, your place where you live will be there, and um, cafes and bars will be here. So it's like a big, big map. And Arnhem is more like compact, you know, everything is near. And uh, yeah, you don't need to spend much time on transportation, which is really great. Um, so yeah, but both cities are really nice, especially for students. The student life is just, yeah, very vibrant there. Uh, and yeah, to kind of summarize our talk, uh, I will list the 10 reasons we talked about. So first, we mentioned the practice-based learning, the fact that you have much more applied tasks than uh, just raw theory, which is really nice. Um, then we talked about student life, which is really awesome here. Um, we also talked about the cities, that they are safe, they are not as huge and chaotic as um, Amsterdam or The Hague. And, and to add to that, there's, of course, there's a safety you feel uh, maybe at night coming home into that, yeah. but I also oh, yeah. I also yeah. want to mention yeah. that it's safe to in, in public spaces to be who you want to be. So mm, uh, that's something that even um, Nordic countries in, in Europe maybe don't offer. I, I was hearing someone in Denmark commenting positively on how in the Netherlands, in a space of appearance in a public space, True. you are safe to mm. to to be who you want to be. Definitely. So that's, yeah, something to, to keep in yeah, mind. Yeah, and also in bigger cities, you you feel very overwhelmed really easily. And to be in a smaller city, being able to see where you're going, what it's like on, in this side of the city and the other, it, it's a better feeling, I would say. Yeah. Definitely. It's very mm -hmm. inclusive. So, mm -hmm. yeah, for all the communities out there, LGBTQ, mm -hmm. all the other, it is such a great place to be. People are so open-minded and so kind. So yeah, that's, I think one, yeah, the biggest country that offers you that feeling, I'd say, yeah. Mm -hmm. At least from the countries I've been to, the Netherlands are like the top. Yeah. So yeah, once again, practice-based learning, <laughs> safe and lively cities, student life, can't forget that. Then um, international community that Rosa mentioned, so many people from different countries that you can meet great campuses, both in Nijmegen and in Arnhem. Uh, student support that I mentioned. So for instance, when you come here and you kind of don't know what to do and where to go, you can always reach out and ask questions. Um, informal teaching style. Yeah, this will be kind of weird for <laughs> people who are used to the formal one, but I can promise you that it is really great and you will get more connected to the people who are teaching you and this will positively impact your learning process, I believe. Um, then, yeah, Dragos mentioned that um, Han is very closely linked to the professional field. So many um, teachers have experience also outside the academic field, which kind of makes it more balanced and nice. Um, yeah, then PPD focus on the personal development, which is great for you as a person outside of your studies. Um, projects, there are many like really nice ones, special to us and that you kind of remember for the rest of your life. I'm sure that Dragos will remember this racing activity. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, this is the 10 reasons why you should go study with us. I hope that you enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for watching, and now we can answer some of your questions. Okay, uh, is it hard to find accommodation in Arnhem and Nijmegen? 
any stories? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, of course, you have to have a bit of luck. Uh, that's uh, that's with everything, not just with housing. Um, but I think if you put in the time and and uh, the the effort of kind of uh, looking for the the ramifications of the housing websites and do search a couple of months in advance, you'll you'll find a place. And for first year students, there's uh, you mentioned already, there's the Han Housing uh, helping you to to find a room in a, uh, a student yeah. dorm. Um, uh, there was, yeah, there's no housing on campus. I know some universities uh, offer that around the world, but there are student dorms that are around the city mm -hmm. and it's all within cycling distance uh, from the university. So, for sure. I would also say make connections and friends earlier on because when, when I was in between this period of uh, uh, finishing with my previous rental contract and I didn't have a place yet I was able to stay at a friend's place mm -hmm. which was uh, much better than I would say hopping around uh, Airbnbs or hotels yeah. so definitely put yourself out there and enjoy it I'd say true and I also would like to mention that if you have more like detailed questions about housing then you should join uh, the next block of the talk show which is will be about um, application admission and housing there we will have the han employee who works in that how um han housing office and uh yeah you will get more clear answers um what did you dislike about the university <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you mentioned uh, the informal uh, way of, of studying. That also comes with the necessity of you as a student having the ability to improvise, to adapt. Mm -hmm. So with that informal style, there was a lack of structure, a, a, a lack of a, a clear definition, uh, which if you have to develop these, these ability for interpretation, for adapting, uh, it can be difficult. Uh, some people don't like that. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind when uh, when making this decision. Yeah, the one thing I would say that uh, could be improved on is definitely the scheduling of classes because some days I would only have one class from let's say uh, 10 to 12.30 but then other days I would have class from 9 to 3 with no breaks in between at all so it can be really hard on us we we don't have lunch we woke up early everyone's grumpy and hungry <laughs> and we all lose motivation in studying in the classes so it's something that can be worked on yeah for sure so no university is perfect like definitely so yeah this is a couple of things that we remembered i personally can say that um one thing i disliked a bit um was that especially in the campus in nijmegen here a bit less um people who are dutch who speak dutch they would mostly speak dutch when they are surrounded by um, also dutch people but if you are an international and you don't speak the language it can get a bit tricky to meet them to meet like actual people <laughs> from the netherlands uh, because they will be always like with their friends or with their group which can be international and then you don't have a problem but yeah sometimes it's a bit tricky but you yeah you get a hang of it um how is the <laughs> how is the weather in the netherlands oh. <laughs> that's a sad question <laughs> <laughs> well, to kind of put it in short, um, it is okay, there is a lot of rain and uh, you have to accept the fact that you will see sun very rare, <laughs> that's like <laughs> the three things that you should keep in mind, uh, so yet yeah, when you come here, definitely buy a waterproof jacket and waterproof boots this is like essential here um yeah for the rest i'd say the winter is mm, relatively not cold it's no, like you will need so when you're cycling you will need oh, yeah. well, uh, course, gloves yeah. you will need uh yeah proper uh, a jacket mm -hmm. uh so yeah, yeah. And also, uh, i'd like to add that it's very bipolar like you you never know what's gonna happen true. you know yeah. it's it's sunny outside and the next minute it's pouring cats and dogs that is yeah. true yeah, yeah. You keep, yeah. 
thanks to 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 sorry for interrupting to to uh, new apps you can oh, yes. you can yes. check every time by minute if it's going to rain for the next 15 minutes yeah, you can that's a very you can go ahead and check and you know uh, I was going to say yeah. at the start I I didn't not know about these apps and I would just use the regular weather app on my phone it's it's never uh, it's never, never accurate yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it says it's uh, sunny but then it's there's a thunderstorm outside. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but today it's it's about 15 degrees. Wind is coming from the north, and uh, it's it's slightly humid. Microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, ooh, question to you, Dragos. Uh, how did the Han prepare you for your current job? Um, there's many things. It's it's not. There's no recipe. I think part of it is is getting to know yourself and what you want to do. Um, I worked uh, in, in several projects uh, which you get to choose yourself also uh, during university and I think one of the main things is you uh, get exposed to, to a range in an entire tapas bar of, uh, of subjects and then you get to see in which ones you have that, that flow that you, you get into and this is of course the first couple of years and after that you can uh, you can specialize, you get a minor in what you, you like doing most and that kind of puts you on the path of uh, what you do uh, in your career. So for, for example right now I work for a software company doing design and simulation and the first time I ever uh, laid my eyes on one of these uh, design uh, software was, was here in the Han in uh, one of the labs. So. There's a, cool. there's a clear link there, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I'd say in general, um, yeah, we have internship in, in like the program. So I think that helps a lot, right? Yeah, I spent uh, two semesters. Uh, one was uh, in my uh, third year mm -hmm. and then one for my thesis, uh, doing actual work for uh, outside of, of the campus. And in that sense, it does make you interact with, with the world outside of academia. And uh, uh, of course, you still have to, to do it for your report, for your thesis, but you're not surrounded by the, the safe space of your campus. You're having real responsibility in, yeah. in, uh, in the engineering world. What about you? Oh. Uh, I'd say one of the main reasons that I chose Han was also be I, I had a really uh, big debate whether to choose research universities or applied sciences universities because I know that research universities usually an IB course would last three years but then that would mean that you get to choose either an internship or a semester abroad and I wanted to do both. I, I wanted to experience both of them and then when I saw that Han had a semester abroad, an internship, and also a graduation internship. I'm kind of like, oof, okay. Mm, Definitely a nice. scale goes there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the same for me because I feel like it's really nice that our third year for communication and IB students is fully abroad. Well, can be because you mm -hmm. can still choose internship in the Netherlands if uh, yeah, it's applicable to you because we have this system which is called three, three culture. culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to have kind of like a, a knowledge about three cultures. So for instance, if you are, I don't know, coming from R Russia like me, Russia would be one, then you're studying in the Netherlands, that's two. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, you would need to go somewhere for your study abroad or internship. And uh, yeah, for Dutch people, it's a bit more complicated because they need to go abroad twice because they only have the Dutch culture in that three. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's pretty nice. Oh yeah, and continuing the topic, there is another question about the internships. Is it hard to find internships in the Netherlands? Um, it's hard in the sense that you get rejected uh, and that's yeah. uh, of course even when you're going to search for jobs later mm -hmm. um, you you need to try so that it's it's not like you you walk into a fair and you pick up an internship and you say that's for me you really have to uh, send out emails uh, have a bunch of interviews that might lead nowhere uh, but then when you do get accepted maybe in multiple places you can also be in the opposite uh, situation where you say, okay, I can now pick between these mm -hmm. three internships mm -hmm. that all want me 
and uh, I'll choose this one because it's more in line with with what I want to spend uh, six months uh, writing about. So yeah, sure. I haven't done my internship yet, so yeah, I don't neither. really know about any of this yet. Yeah, but um, I'm like close to that process. I'm finishing mm -hmm. my second year right now, and um, I will do my study abroad first. Um, but yeah, later on I will have to do internship and a lot of uh, my peers are doing it the other way around. So first internship and then study abroad. And I can hear from them that um, they've already found it through LinkedIn and some other platforms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not that like crazy difficult, but you just have to put a lot of time and effort in it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah if you're going to aim for, you know, top tier companies, Tesla, Microsoft, yeah. it's going to be a bit more difficult. Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> so yeah. keep that in mind. Definitely. Yeah. And you'll have some experience with getting rejected from looking for housing, so... <laughs> it's part of the process. <laughs> yeah, it sounds so sad, but I mean, yeah. it's like, it's life. It's mm -hmm. okay to be rejected mm -hmm. in like certain positions, but you will always find a place if you're really determined to find it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Can you study a foreign language? Which ones? Probably, Rosa, you can tell. Yeah, so uh, in the second semester of our first year, we get to choose between four languages. Uh, it's German, Dutch, Spanish or French. And you're not allowed to uh, choose a language that you know already, obviously. Like a Dutch person can't choose uh, Dutch. And I chose French because I have zero knowledge. <laughs> and then uh, if you do have advanced knowledge, you're allowed to take a test and start uh, at a higher level. But then all the languages start at zero. Yeah. Um, and I know for sure that it's the same for IB and communication, that you um, have this mandatory requirement that you have to take this second language. Um, yeah. And it's the same for both programs. I took German, for example, and I think we studied it for one and a half years, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And it was, it was kind of nice. It was very difficult because obviously you're starting to learn a brand new language for yourself. But yeah, it's nice. Um, even if, even after it's in your curriculum, you can choose to have uh, courses here on campus with the, oh, yeah. the Talent Center, the, the Language true. Center, uh, where you can do it, but in your extra time in the evenings. So that's true. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you need to know Dutch to study in Han and outside of Han? Uh, I would say no. Um, even living in the city, uh, everything is in in, uh, in English. The materials in school, even if maybe the original uh, files or instructions were in Dutch, they're all translated. Uh, it is an added benefit after your first second year uh, to 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 make friends in the city or or find a job in a bar or in a cafe. Uh, but it's not it's not necessary to uh, uh, get by with your day to day life. Mm -hmm. You'll pick up some words here and there, Dankewel, Ashibliv, you know. <laughs> yeah, you'll pick up these little words from your Dutch friends or the signs uh, in the city. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's quite easy to learn, I would say. Yeah, the uh, funny story here, I remember that when I just came to the Netherlands, I was, uh, um, yeah, like by every time I go to the supermarket, I was trying to understand what the cashier is saying to me, uh, like afterwards. And most of the times they were like asking, do you want a receipt? And I was like, okay, no. And I was saying that in Dutch back to them. And then one time I was like, okay, I'm going to show off. I know how to say it now. <laughs> and then she asks me something else afterwards. And then I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know that. But yeah, you will just pick it up and it's really fun to learn it, mm -hmm. especially with your Dutch friends. So yeah, it's really nice. Are there a lot of opportunities for sports? Sports, uh, yes. ISB, they, they host, I think they have futsal, football, basketball and volleyball weekly. So I attend the volleyball at times. Uh, it's every Wednesday night. And it's and even if uh, the, uh, you you're interested in a sport that does not exist, you can be the one to create the club, sure. contact your people, uh, gather you know a group of friends, and then they'll find a, a venue for you, and then exactly you can yeah. work it out. Just be initiative, and yeah. then you will and definitely. Outside of the campus, there's uh, an initiative uh, citywide for all universities. You can uh, get a card for 15, 20 bucks a month. 
and you can go to all gyms and when i mean gyms i mean also things like boxing yoga oh, wow. uh sports that uh are yeah maybe not available on campus you can mm -hmm. go and, and uh, do it with a massive discount because you're a student so that's really cool yeah <clears throat> so yeah there are definitely opportunities um, how complicated is the application process? Well, to first kind of inform you a bit about it, um, you can definitely uh, go on the website at HUN and you will see all the information there. But if you want to figure it out more in detail, then you can attend the next block of the live talk show, which is going to be specifically about admissions, application and housing. There you will have... Um, you will see the conversation between me, a student, and also two of the Han employees who are going to give you some factual information. Another question. Um, what are the most uh, interesting activities or clubs at Han? Um, so for me, it was actually kind of related to the study, the, the projects we were involved with. Uh, there was also one, the Eco Marathon, uh, I didn't mention earlier, which uh, we were trying to build a car as efficient as possible with the least amount of energy input. Um, these projects don't stop when your uh, uh, school hours finish. So you have access to the facilities, to the labs, to also in the other building in the industrial design. Um, so if you do form your group and you're committed to this this task, these will take up your your evenings as well, <laughs> and um, yeah, they'll be they'll be part of your uh, your uh, personal life as much as they are from your uh, yeah academic life. Yeah, we also have this thing called ISA, International Student Association, yeah. I think, and then they would host like parties or galas, and. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish I would get to experience it, but we don't know what COVID brings us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and a month ago they hosted, maybe less than a month ago, they hosted karaoke night and everyone was just screaming at the top of their lungs. It was, <laughs> it, it was really memorable. That's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there is a lot of things you can attend and you will definitely get informed about it when you're already here. So don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, yeah thank you for all your questions and we were really really happy to answer them and help you out with your journey i'm sure that picking a university is a very stressful and challenging thing to do but we've done it and you can do it too so don't worry about it thank you guys for joining me thank today you. it was really nice to talk to you and yeah thank you for watching it bye bye